Hello everyone, have you ever come across a post like this where someone is asking ChatGPT to count how many R's there are in strawberry and it's unable to do so? You might have seen this post or this, 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 or this. Now, the issue is that a lot of these large language models start to hallucinate. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can prevent models from hallucinating and giving a lot more of a direct answer. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here I have the ChatGPT 4.0 model, which is the state of the art. And if I ask it how many R's there are in strawberry, it's going to give me a response saying that there are two R's in strawberry. Obviously, it's incorrect. Now here's the thing. In Open Web UI, we have access to a lot of these direct controls that the model looks at. So let me show you what I mean. I can go to the controls, set my temperature value all the way down to zero. And let me ask this question again. And this time we get a correct answer. So you can see that these parameters really influence the output from the models. So in this video, we're going to understand about what these parameters mean and how changing these parameters can really impact the output of our models. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first parameter that we're going to be looking at is temperature. Temperature controls how creative you want your model to be. T higher values for temperature means that your model is going to be a lot more creative when it gives a response versus lower values means that your model is going to be a lot more direct and concise when it gives you a response. So you can try it out for yourself. Let's say that we choose the GPT-40 mini model and we ask it to describe how it, ho how it feels to hold snow for the first time. This is the response that we can get from the temp when the te value for temperature is zero. However, let's change the temperature value to one and ask the same question. So here it's a magical experience, here it's an exhilarating experience. So you can read through some of these responses to see how creative your model starts getting when you start setting in higher values for temperature. And that's basically what this specific parameter controls. Another parameter that we have access to is the stop sequence. So the stop sequence basically tells your large language model that when it's giving a response, if it encounters tracking number in the response, it needs to completely stop its response. The reason why we would want to do something like this is because we can automatically add the tracking number from maybe our database into the response. So what we could do is we could say something like, hey, my order number is this. The model is going to give it a response like, thank you for reaching out. Your order has been shipped. It's currently on its way and you can track it using the following. It was giving the word tracking number, but we said when it encounters this, stop the response. And now we can manually add in the tracking number to this response. So that's the stop sequence. Now there are some more parameters here that we don't need to get too much into, but just to give you a high level overview, um, top P and top K, they control the randomness and diversity of a response. So when you set lower values for these, you're gonna keep getting the same words over and over again. Versus when you set higher values, you'll get a much more of a diverse range of vocabulary that your model can choose from. And the response is also going to be a lot more diverse. Another parameter is context length. So context length allows the model to remember earlier parts of the conversation. When your context length is low, like 2048, it's only going to remember the last 2048 words when it's giving a response. Versus when you set higher context lengths, the model is going to be able to remember a lot more of the earlier parts of the conversation. Obviously the performance can start degrading. Maybe the model might give a lot more of a slower response, but in situations when you want your model to remember a huge part of your conversation history, you might want to set the context length to a little bit of a higher number. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you found it insightful and you got an understanding about how the output of large language models can really be controlled by the advanced parameter settings. Now on ChatGPT, you don't have access to these parameters, so you can't really control a lot of these outputs. But with Open Web UI, you can control the outputs of not just any open AI model, but any large language models that's available on Olama. So if you found this video insightful, please like, comment, and subscribe. It will really help the channel out. And uh, if you have any further suggestions on you know, future videos, then please feel free to leave a comment and I'll, I'll make sure that it gets addressed. That's it for this video. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.